Welcome to the online homework website. This is where you're going to be doing the majority of the work for the quarter and I'm going to go through how to use the program just to give you an introduction. If you've used the program before you do not need to register as a new student. You'll just sign in like you always have and then use the course ID and enrollment key I give you. However, if you've never registered as a new student, this is how you do it. You click on register as a new student and I would highly recommend you just use the same username as you do at Big Bend. That way I can find you easier in the course and you don't have to think one up. Pick a password. And then put your first and last name in there. and enter your email address. This one should be your Big Bend email. That way when you get messages from me it's going to send a notification to that email address which is really important. Then if this isn't already clicked make sure you check this box. This is notify me by mail when I receive a new message. That way if I send you any messages you will get them. You'll also be notified in your email account. Go ahead and sign up. Don't enter your course ID and enrollment key yet. Just sign up. So then it says new user sign up has been done. You're good to go. So we're going to go back to the main home page. Just click on WAMAP.org again. There you are. And you can use that username and password that you just created. And then when you go down here to accessibility, use either defaults or forced image based display. If for any reason you're having trouble seeing graphs or images, it'd probably be good to choose forced image based display. That way there's a much better chance of you being able to see the content. So this is what you'll see when you enroll. There are no courses currently in your WAMAP account. So we're going to click on enroll in a new class. Your course ID and enrollment key are going to be specific to your class. We do not have the same course ID and enrollment key every quarter. This is going to change depending on what course you're enrolled in and it changes every quarter actually. So you're going to log in with the little bubble course ID and enrollment key that pops up here at the bottom of the screen. These are going to give you the course ID and enrollment key specific to your course. Once you've enrolled then you'll click return to the main home page and look at that. There you've got a course sitting right there ready to go. So this is what your course is going to look like. You're going to scroll down, introduce yourself to the class, and then start working on content. Right here you can see that Unit 7 is the beginning of Math 98, and for each class it will be different, but you'll go ahead and click on the first unit. Watch the videos if you're interested. I highly recommend you learn a little bit about online courses but let's just get to the math content for now. Order of operations. I click on 7.1a order of operations. You can watch the video. This will give you instruction on how to do the two problems here right after the video. The video is going to be the same as the workbook that you'll be purchasing. Once you've gone through the lecture notes then you go to the questions and fill out the work in your workbook. That is part of your grade and it is part of that recording that you will do for each test you take at home in Panopto. You want to make sure you show me each one of those workbook pages so I can give you credit for it. Now let's take a look at the questions. I have find 5 plus 4 times 7 minus 2. So let's see, 7 minus 2 is going to give me 5. 5 times 4 is 20, and then we'll add 5 to that. 
So 25. Let's go ahead and submit that and see what happens. When I enter that in, I get a score of 10 out of 10. That's great. That means you got full credit. Let's say you didn't get it correct and you want to try again. You get three attempts and then if you don't get it on the third attempt, it will give you the solution to that problem and you can go in and try a new problem. So you would say attempt similar problem and that way you can still get 100% on your homework. Let's try number two. 7 minus 4 is 3, 3 squared is 9, and then we've got 6 divided by 2 is 3, 3 plus 9 is 12, so we can type that in. It's a good idea if you're getting stuff that's really complicated to preview it first. Looks like that's what I wanted, so we'll go ahead and submit that, and sure enough, I've got 10 out of 10 on that one too. And then let's go back over to our main home page. Scroll down, and now I can work on the next one. You will want to complete at minimum one of these sections per day. So this would be section one. I'm going to minimize that. So order of operations would be day one. Evaluate and simplify algebraic expressions would be day two, etc. Notice that it has the date assigned to it so that you know exactly where you are if you're ahead or behind the schedule. I try and stay one or two days ahead of the schedule, that way if you get stuck on something, you can always slow down and figure it out and then move on. Next thing I want to show you is the grade book. This is going to show you all the coursework that you have done so far. I'm going to see if my homework that I attempted is going to show up here. Ah, there it is. 7.1a order of operations. I got 20 out of 20, so it's showing 100% on that homework section. I can also see what I got on my test in the grade book. And I can see what my practice review assignments are and it just is a great way to kind of see where I'm at. It also shows you every single homework assignment you're going to have to do for the whole quarter. Let's go down to the bottom here where we've got exams, the final A, part A, final part B, the homework, and the weighted total. So you want to make sure that all your exams are and your homework are at 75% by the time you're about ready to take the final. The final is part of your grade as well. You must receive a 65% on that final to be able to pass the class. If you get stuck on any of the problems and you just have no clue what to do about it, you're completely stuck, let me show you how you can message your instructor here. We'll go back to the section where I was. And let's say you didn't remember your order of operations. You can post this question to the forum. That way you can speak with the other students in the class about what's going on and get some help. They're going to have more access to this than I will simply because they're going to be working on this a lot with you. And so they're going to be able to share with you more than waiting for me to look at it at the end of the day each day to make sure that everyone's up to speed. Because of this, you can post your thread. Just make sure that you give some explanation, maybe something like, 
I tried adding 5 and 4 first and it didn't work and hopefully somebody can shed some light on that. And then post the thread. So then you'll be able to look at your forums to see if anyone's replied. When you're done you can sign out right here and it will also tell you right here on the front page whether you've got any new messages or any new forum posts. Let me know if you have any questions this quarter.